By now, we know that fluoride is a mineral that plays a crucial role in preventing tooth decay and strengthening the tooth enamel. While fluoride is naturally found in some food and water sources, many people do not get enough of this mineral. In today's video, we will discuss how milk fluoridation can be a simple and an effective way to increase fluoride intake and improve oral health. Talking about milk fluoridation, it's basically the addition of a measured quantity of fluoride to bottled or packaged milk, which is meant for children's consumption. In 1953, Ziegler, a pediatrician, started the first project with fluoridated milk in the Swiss city of Winterthur, which was then reported in 1956. Later, in 1988, the community-based milk fluoridation scheme was introduced in Bulgaria under the International Milk Fluoridation Program started by the Barrow Foundation in collaboration with the World Health Organization. We know that milk fluoridation is a beneficial tool. But what is the rationale for adding fluoride to milk in particular? Well, primarily, we know that the nutritional value of milk is extremely high and is also often available to children through schools and other nutritional programs. It has also been noted that virtually all forms of milk products are suitable for fluoridation as the process is relatively simpler and the bioavailability of fluoride is not reduced by milk. Research has demonstrated the effectiveness of fluoridated milk in the prevention of dental diseases as well as confirmed fluoride's dual mode of action, which is topical and systemic. Additionally, fluoridated milk keeps a permanently low level of ionized fluoride within the oral cavity, thus promoting remineralization. However, it has been reported that the preventive effect of fluoridated milk is greater only if the consumption was commenced early on in the child's life. Now, there are several points to be considered when deciding whether milk fluoridation is necessary for any given community and then to plan a program for the same. We will first begin by examining the dental health status within the community, especially that of the children. If the DMFT index among the children is noted to be moderate to very high, then there is a clear indication for a caries preventive program. We will then check whether the community has already been exposed to any other source of fluoride before deciding on the estimated dose of fluoride to be delivered in the milk. For example, evaluation of the levels of fluoride in the community drinking water or if the people are using fluoridated toothpaste should be checked first. Now that a decision has been made to implement a milk fluoridation scheme, the urine fluoride monitoring procedure is mandatory concerning the safety and compliance of the program. The fourth step is to plan the milk distribution process. Fluoridated milk distribution to children can easily be done through existing systems like school milk or milk for kindergartens and nursery school programs. However, before this, it is important to first identify a person who would be responsible for supervising milk distribution and consumption. Finally, fluoridated milk may be produced in several different forms. It may be in the form of a liquid which would be pasteurized and sterilized or in the form of a powder. Both of these contain a variety of fluoridating agents to provide them with the optimum amount of fluoride according to the WHO recommendations, which ranges from 0 to 1 mg fluoride per day according to the age of the child and the fluoride concentration in the local water supply. By far, sodium fluoride is the most commonly used agent for the large-scale production of fluoridated milk in countries like China, Russia and Britain. Now, to calculate the fluoride concentration, it's important to first consider the volume of fluoridated milk that would be consumed by each child daily. Consider 200 to 250 ml of milk consumed by a child per day and knowing the fluoride requirement is 1 mg per day for the said volume of milk, we will need the concentration of fluoride to be set at 5 ppm. Sodium fluoride is generally added to milk in the form of a concentrated aqueous solution. It may be added pre- or post-pasteurization for the pasteurized milk. Sterilization of the sodium fluoride is done using an autoclave at 121 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes at the time of its manufacturing. Care should be taken that it is not contaminated when being added to the milk. Always remember that if the milk is being sterilized, the fluoride solution should be added before the heat treatment of the milk is carried out. However, in cases of fluoridated powdered milk, it's made by fluoridating the liquid milk first to get a homogeneous product and then the water is removed in stages to create the powder. Now that we have a better understanding of milk fluoridation, let's take a look at a couple of questions. First, when and where was the first community-based milk fluoridation set up? The correct answer is Bulgaria in 1988. 
Next, by what percentage has milk fluoridation led to caries reduction? The right answer is 60%. In conclusion, milk fluoridation is a safe and effective way to increase fluoride intake and improve dental health. This method can be particularly beneficial for those living in areas with low or non-existing fluoride content in water sources. By adding fluoride to milk, we can help prevent tooth decay and improve oral health outcomes. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.